Uh, so let's get started. And uh, Shua is going to talk about uh, case self-tests. So. Um, so going for this uh, thing is mostly, I want to get some discussion going on what I should do um, for the next year. And then once a year, I kind of do this and give the State of the Union on um, kernel self-test and then talk about what can we do the next year. Um, so what I, so we, in the last five years, we added a bunch of tests. We are about 70 um, directories, targets, if you will, for the case self-test. So what that means is we have a lot of growth and we have a lot of tests. And more importantly, um, Linux kernel um, functional testing group from Linaro, they have been using this to qualify uh, Linux Next, Upstream, and all of the stable releases. So they, uh, they run a, a variety of tests, and this slide uh, is a credit to Dan Roo and um, Andrew Roxel. So, so they run a lot of tests. They, they show how many tests they are running, uh, various tests. Uh, this is a graph showing that. That's slide from. And the, I want to focus the discussion on some of the numbers we are seeing. That's my primary goal here. So you'll see, and then also make a decision on we want to, going forward, do we want to, um, there is this ongoing question that we have. Do we rev match kernel self-test with uh, kernel, or do we use mainline uh, stable kernel self-test on stable releases. I'll go into a little bit of detail on some of the pros and cons, and then what we are running into, what I want to solve going forward. So you'll see two numbers here. You'll see 4.9 on this, on the, on the, all the way on the right side, rev matched. And you'll see a failure, uh, a total of um, a, pass of five, 45 tests pass and eight fail. And out of 126, some, num I'm not quite sure the number of tests here, but um, whereas if you, how many, Dan, do you know the number of tests there? I think it was 198 uh, For, even for this rev matched kernel, for 4.9, all the way. Is whatever the, it adds yeah, to right, okay, 150. And, and then if you see on this side, on the left side with the 5.3 RC7 uh, self-test, rev matched. So you're seeing 55 failures. That includes, that's the total failures. Um, you can see using um, rev matched kernel, you have, you're running fewer tests because there aren't as many tests, obviously, in 4.9 kernel self-test, because we keep adding a lot of tests as we go forward. So between 4.9 and 5.3, there is a gap there. So let's, let's come back to this numbers uh, later. I'll go over them later. And then this is the current, uh, there are these three different use cases. And then um, rev matched kernel, that's, what we, that's, uh, that's the numbers I showed. And then we have a case self test um, on, with the latest table. What that means is it is case self test uh, on Linux Next and 5.3 RCs, we do rev match. But when it comes to stables, all the 5.2, um, I think we are at 14 now, and 4.14, 4.9, all of those 4.19, those are, those are currently um, latest stable is being used. What that means is 5.2.14 will be used on um, all of the ones below, including 5.2.14. So, so let's get to the next agenda, next discussion. So I'm trying to decide, I have always said, I, I kind of said, well, you, you will get better coverage if you use the latest case self-test. But that has pros and cons to them because latest case self-tests tend to be a little bit of an insurance situation. So that's proving to be a little bit problematic, balancing coverage and dealing with the test bugs. In some cases, it's mostly, we are looking at features, the, the guideline for writing tests and is if a feature cannot be tested, 
because when you're running into going to run into that a lot if you are in the in that situation where you're running latest uh, k-self tests on a older stable for example if you're running on 4.4 using 5.4 for example then you will see several features missing right in 5.4 so you will have to have skip handling graceful handling of skipping features that cannot be tested ideally so because if if you do not skip um, if dependencies are not met and if you don't skip they'll all become failures it'll be a bunch of failures it'll be very difficult to figure out the status of the situation one solution is of course um, saying rev match that is one solution however you are going to be missing a lot of test coverage so I would like to get to where um, a balancing point where we can continue to run latest stables on older stables and minimize the number of um, failures we see and coverage increase the coverage is that is that that's what I want to ideally get to so that's what we have been trying and um, so we have uh, some areas have very active in terms of writing tests. And we are getting, like for example, you, you won't see C group tests, for example, in 4.9, uh, rev matched K self tests. So you're not getting that coverage, even though you have C groups there. So there is an advantage to running um, as, as kernel self tests from um, mainline stable on older, because we're, we keep adding tests, not just for new features, we keep adding for tests, missing tests in some areas. So some, some of the numbers here. I, uh, so from, this is from 5.3.rc7, I think, right? Is the rc7, doesn't matter really. So I, I'm comparing two different architectures, um, x86-64 and ARM-64. So out of 198 total tests, 63% of them pass, and the 11% failures you're seeing, and 18 known fails, they are failures. Known failures means that um, the LKFT folks went through the list of failures and categorized them as known failures and they have been reporting. There's a variety of them. I'm looking into, I'm going to start looking at that more closely um, to see what is the nature of the failures. Are they the failures of the tests that they should have skipped, that we should increase the number of skips, or the nature of them, I do not know. I, I looked at a few of them. They, they seem like something that could, should have been skips. Um, that means some dependency file is not found, then you should go and uh, skip. Or it could be that you do not have a dependency. Um, dependent, um, some dependency, even, it could even be a tool dependency. Probably a, a CPU memory kind of test is using LSCPU to run LSCPU and get the, some information and parse that and take different actions. So it could be those kinds of dependencies. So my goal is to get this number down, both failures and known failures as much as possible. So um, these are numbers from, uh, this, this number can be interesting, 5.14 um, RC. Again, you'll see known failures. This is rev matched with, I'm assuming, K self test from the same 5.214, because that's the top of the main line uh, stable, latest stable. So the same thing will be used on current setup, the same thing will be used on 4.1972, um, also on 14 and 4.9. So that's, that's the ideal state we want to be in. Um, uh, that is, well, that is the state we would like to be without uh, known, these many known failures, potentially. So what, what does that mean to us, um, meaning individual test maintainers and myself, and then also CI um, admins? What, what does that, so my goal is to improve the process. Um, there is some of the, uh, we have been, um, um, I've been talking to um, both Anders and Dan, and we have been going, and there are some, we need to, we are working on improving some of the reporting issues, the 
process coming into me. And then um, I'm going to have to go around and ask test maintainers to, individual test maintainers to make this a priority to help me solve these problems. I probably will start looking at these known failures and support me in getting the known failures down so that we can enable, we can make um, CI uh, experience better running case self test because there is an advantage to doing this, right? Obviously, um, if, uh, if these tests get run all, on all of the stables as well as Linux Next, um, we are better off for coverage. Any questions? Yes. Hi, uh, I'm on the Ubuntu kernel team, and this is something that, that we struggle with from time to time, is, is, is running the case self-test uh, against our, our stable releases. Um, and uh, some of that's, you know, some of it's, like you mentioned, the BPF test suite is very exhaustive, but it's also very complex to backport some of those, those case self-test changes along right. with the code changes. Um, so I guess this, this idea to use the latest stable release is really interesting to me. I hadn't thought about that. Is there buy-in, do you think, to actually backport those, those self-test changes to uh, the latest stable? Correct. So that is another issue because we cannot backport all of them, Right. obviously. So we have to reach a balance point. So I'm actually throwing this idea out. Is, is this a crazy idea to continue to want to support, um, support um, um, mainline stable on older releases, as old as 4.9 or 4.4 or even 3.18, um, all of them. Or do we have a cutoff, kind of in-between solution? We say, hey, um, match it with something that's closer to it so that you're not, you're not trying to um, have full coverage, but you're saying some balancing the pain of, pain of running um, mainline stable uh, case self test on very old stable, um, the pros and cons. Kind of balance it out and find a sweet point where, say, we're getting enough, um, we can't get the full coverage that we would get from the mainline stable, but we're reducing the pain of. Um, my, yes. yeah. my thought on this is mm -hmm. it's similar to a lot of any of the other kernel development processes where we're relatively resource constrained. People have limited yes. time, um, and I, I completely agree. I would love to have latest tests running on older kernels, um, but it seems to me that in a resource-constrained environment, right. you have to prioritize what we're working on, and we're already having a lot of trouble getting people even to write tests exactly. for the latest kernel. Exactly. Um, so exactly. If, if we can get the test environment similar to how we have a warning list build, right, if we don't have failures, like the latest kernel, should everything should pass. Um, and that seems to me to have the highest priority. So once we get to the fact that it, you know, get to the point where it's not noisy, mm -hmm. where it is truly has meaning and you say, ah, a test failed, you can't submit whatever broke this, like you have to fix it because you're, that's the only warning in the entire build and we run the t entire test suite and that's the one that broke, that stands out really strongly. That seems like the highest priority of the next being coverage adding as much coverage as possible. And I think once the, prior, like the urgency of that starts to diminish, then we move to saying, okay, now we can start pulling this back to stable trees and see what we can get. But I think once we get to zero warnings, eventually the old kernels will have zero warnings also, and those tests will be meaningful on those kernels. Right, only if um, there is that, um, the issue of backporting. So uh, you, you can't just backport. Uh, yes, so my priority, I have always done, that's how you know, it grew from five to 70. My uh, priority is to get tests in. So that's my highest priority. So um, I'm completely with you and Michael, Michael is saying the same thing. So yes, that's what we want. Um, uh, now, how do we make it, how do we make it easier for CI because they are adding a lot of value. Because when, if you look at individually, I run some of the, sorry, I run some of the tests and BPA folks do run their tests and every single maintainer around here 
or developers in subsystems, they focus on their tests. And I, when I am sending my pull requests, I focus on the bigger thing of overall testing. And what uh, Dan and Anders are adding is that they are taking these tests and they are integrating. They are not only integrating um, the tests themselves, they are also looking at kernel bugs. So they are bringing a lot of value to us in the development process. So I would like to help them um, so that they can help us. So that's one of the things. So that's where the balancing act, that's why I'm throwing this out to ask for your so, input. So I have two comments. One on Kay's comment is that uh, the people who are most affected by this should scratch their own ish. And, and I'm in the embedded space where we haven't run a mainline kernel ever. So we're the ones on LTS. So it seems like that group ought to bear the, the burden of doing coding and triage or whatever is required to, to make it so that you can don't have to rev match. If we want the extra coverage, we should put in the work. So that's, that's, that's fine. Uh, I'm, willing, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to push other people in the embedded community to do that. <clears throat> but the other, my other point is that I think uh, it seems, I, I, I don't know the code base that well, uh, but it seems like there might be opportunities to put some of this handling in a library or a shared routine, the skip list handling. Uh, I know that... It so, already does that. Okay. It's, it's all, all in the common uh, code. That's how common handling works. Okay. So, uh, but yes, there is tests do need to return. Some of that knobs happen in the test. That's where we are seeing some issues here. I, I agree that getting tests written is the first priority. And that the second, I agree with you, Keys, that the second priority is getting it working better when it's matched. And if that happens, because if you noticed in that slide, uh, when we run on mainline, we still have something like a 30% failure rate. Yeah. Um, that's like an ideal situation. Um, so that's gonna get worse over time when that becomes 5.4 and then we're, we're testing that with like, you know, a kernel in two years. Um, so if we, if, we, if we prioritize that and got that working well, it would help with stable as well. Yes, and I think the place to apply the resources would be then on getting current tests working with older kernels and not necessarily trying to maintain like every branch of self-test over time because that's also, you know, has a, has a huge cost over time. No, we won't be able to do that, um, definitely. Right? I mean, there is a minimal effort we can do in terms of improving um, rev-matched uh, kernel 4.4 on 4.4. So um, that's a good point. Let's get the, these things done. And then um, I do need help um, from the LKFT folks themselves that I, um, I would like more reviews when they come in and say, oh, this test is, uh, should skip and it's not skipping. So I would like to be able to uh, more eyes on the code. Um, from the angle that um, you are looking at your use case and you need to look at that use case. And I've talked to, uh, I'm asking for help there. And um, yes, we do need to, uh, we need to figure out um, a different way. So there is this other model that I need to worry about too. Because the way um, the current maintenance works is um, tests flow through test, individual test maintainer sub subsystems partly because there are dependencies. So I, I'll have to work with maintainers and uh, figure out a better way where I can, we can, um, some of these come in through that as well because they don't get as much reviews. Because their uh, um, individual test maintainers are focused on um, tests themselves, which is good, which is, that's what should happen. Um, some of the framework staff, um, sometimes I miss, Sometimes I don't get have visibility to some other stuff if it goes through. So those are the, there are some process issues. Also, I need to work on getting it getting to a point where it's working well. Is there a question in the back? Or? Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Um, yeah. Like as an upstream maintainer, all my tests are focused on upstream but I'm absolutely happy to have people who are running them downstream send me fixes to make them work there. And I think in a lot of cases it's, it's often trivial. It's like, does this syscall exist? Mm -hmm. There's right. sometimes there's right. hard cases like, does this bug exist? Which is tricky, but 
in general, I think a lot of the tests should be able to run, the mainline tests should be able to run clean against stable with a few little tweaks. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Y'all can tell me. <laughs> um, so no, but, no. I mean, but I think, yeah, there's definitely a willingness to have little warts in the tests if that's what we need. Right. It's just all the upstream developers, don't, that's not their focus. They're not thinking about that when they're writing tests. Um, so that's really. So I think I mean I agree with Tim. Like the people downstream need to do that work because, yeah, right. upstream, we're just trying to get tests in as fast as can as fast as we can. Right. So um, Michael being one of the um, um, ones that uh, helped uh, put a lot of the K self test um, generic code. I'm not worried, uh, concerned about PowerPC at all. <laughs> so you, you look at that. Um, yes, there are some uh, individual test uh, um, main, uh, developers sometimes, maintainers. They are worried, worried about the content of the test. That's where it should be. So that's why I'm trying to um, take this as a general case self test problem um, that will fall, obviously, under, under my responsibility. I just, I need support, more support from individual test maintainers. So when I go and say, this test is failing, I want to be able to get response saying, yeah, we will, we will help you fix. And then you're absolutely right, we can get more traction if we focused on the latest. Yeah, and I'm, I'm in the same position, like, sure, <clears throat> I'll take a, I'll take, backports to make things work better with older kernels. Um, to that end, I think it, it helps to classify uh, a test, you know, because there's testing that a bug doesn't exist, mm -hmm. which that should be, that should definitely pass on the stable kernels because it was a serious enough right. bug to add a test for it, that, that should be fixed in the stable kernels also. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, I want to backport that. Um, feature additions get weird right. because sometimes a feature got backported. So if it's in the kernel and it's hard to detect or like, that, that starts getting strange, um, right. but I think maybe having um, documentation somewhere, maybe it already exists and I just haven't it found does. it, to say, yeah. here are the classes of tests we'd expect in the backporting. Um, you know, what we'd expect for a bug fix test, you should, the bug should already be fixed and do this and like sort of break down all the pieces and probably the top of that is all your tests should pass in mainline as the first requirement, because that's where I've, with any changes, I've always pointed people at documentation to get them right. to understand. Right. So there is documentation that exists, and then there is a, I probably should turn my um, slide set that I linked from the case self test wiki uh, into a proper document, potentially. Um, I do, when I review, I always ask these questions when I'm doing the reviews. Um, unfortunately, there are some patches that get in without getting that framework review. That's one of the things that I'm trying to fix also. I review or, and I'm asking help from um, others um, to review as well. Um, so, and, and then if you are also maintainer, te individual test subsystem maintainers are also aware of these problems, that's why we're discussing this, then you will be looking for them as well, yourself, right? Um, because there are three kinds of dependencies that we're looking at. Tool dependencies and such, we can handle that in the framework. Uh, the second one is um, reporting skips and recognizing stuff. I don't want to burden individual tests to do that. Um, the third part is the variations on how do we recognize. There are three kinds of things we do. Right now, um, the scripts that depend on, dependent, are dependent on a module, when they are loading, they Try to, that's the thing that you, you, if, you, if the module doesn't exist, you skip and you go through that process. And the second kind of dependency is config option dependency and architectural dependency. So we have been making improvements in that. So it's not 100% um, yet, that's where the continuous improvement comes in. It's almost, sometimes it's like uh, shoveling snow, um, shoveling while snow is falling because we have tests coming in as well. So they are bringing skips. They are bringing these kinds of dependency checks, missing dependency checks. And the third one is also system calls. So um, that falls into sometimes the category of test content itself. So what that means is that um, if a system call 
based on the system call returns, you might have to say feature is missing and skip versus. So there are three or four different kinds of dependency checks that have to happen. So some of them fall into test content. I look at um, the framework closely. And then if uh, somebody sends a test script and say, if there is a root check, another aspect is coverage. That means if you have 10 tests, um, but only one of them requires a certain dependency and rest can run, so that just that test should fail on that dependency or skip on that dependency, run other nine. Um, and then coming back to that, I look at, the, look at those kinds of things for framework, high level framework things, and I do give um, comments on that. What I can't potentially have either expertise or to tell the nuances of the, third, the last kind, I, last one we mentioned, the actual, the, that depends on actual feature and how that somebody has to know, I have to have the knowledge of what should happen, and I can't. <laughs> I, I just won't, won't be able to do that. So that's where I need help. So it's probably a process of um, asking, that's why I'm asking support from uh, test individual test maintainers saying, I would like to have awareness that um, the value of C value CI is adding and that how can we make it easy, so. Hi, um, I think you probably covered this in the last few minutes, um, mm -hmm. but uh, so I work on the live patching self-tests and um, generally, you know, we've gotten to the point where um, we kind of have all the, the tests that we initially, you know, kind of want it. And when we have patch sets up for review that add new features or heavily modify or, or subtract features, we like to see a self-test come along with that. Um, and I think um, our perspective is that you know, when, we, when we write those tests so that we are targeting, you know, the latest upstream, you know, what my patch set is implementing. And so I just wanted to share with you, like, I, I don't think we've ever thought uh, of the possibility of somebody just grabbing um, the upstream, like, live patch self-test and then running that against, um, you know, a kernel from a few versions past. So if that's something that, um, you know, people want to do, then I think, um, you know, we'll need a, a, a way to kind of express that, I guess, somehow in the tests. Um, it's, it's very easy um, for me if I'm backporting uh, self-test back to say rel, because um, I could just bring all the associated kernel code that, that you know, um, supports those features. But if somebody's not as familiar with that and wants to run, again, you know, upstream K self-test against you know, something unstable, that's something that I don't think we had, had kind of anticipated. Right. So you, your test is a good example of a test coming in uh, that can provide coverage on stable, right? You, you, if you have live patch in some of the stables. So because you're adding a new, uh, you're adding a new coverage area for the stable. Because if you have supported in the live, Live, I mean, in the stable live patch in stable, and then you're adding a test new. Um, right. So we have to figure out a way to to do that, and I can we can work together on getting that. So may, maybe everything now looks as as a nail to me, but it seems to me the answer to the misdependencies is the testing. So that somebody I'm, sends mm -hmm. is is testing, simply checking. So somebody sends a change with a new test, it's within reasonable latency run on the older um, version of the kernel and the, the review gets you know message that this, this test is broken on an older LTS and then developer fixes this even before this submitted. I don't think that throwing in more people and eyes on this problem is kind of scalable and reliable solution and also not the right, just right way to spend. So human Linux, Linux, I'm sorry, Linux Next. We do that. That's the whole integration process in Linux Next. So that's we do. Also for so. the older releases, and also for the older releases, right. because that's what the problem we're trying to solve. And within reasonable latency of the patch right. being mailed. Right. That's one of the things um, we have been talking about. So that when uh, during that process of merge window that potentially we run it on stables as well, if that is a supported use case. 
Yeah, so one observation is that uh, in the file system space where XFS tests is always out of tree, um, one of the models that we've developed in ext4 is when we add new features, we actually add a zero length file in sysfs, so slash sysfs ext4 feature name, because that's how we can make the tests easily key off of whether or not a feature gets backported to, say, an Android kernel um, without having to do explicit version checks. Um, and since we know that that's just something that's gonna happen, we just developed that as part of our feature development sort of process. You know, and I think this goes in with a lot of stuff. K units gonna be the same is mm -hmm. right. sometimes you have to make changes to how you develop your features to make it be more easily testable. Right. So, right. so um, I think I have a couple more things I want to cover, but yeah, let's oh, go ahead. Real quick. Go ahead. That's I just want right. to say that in App Armor, um, we do the same thing. We do feature flags, and it makes testing so much easier. You can key off that, and it, it just makes it a lot easier to know if we've backported a certain feature or, or what kernel uh, has that feature. And then I want to touch on Dimitri's point that if we're able to do automated testing of stable kernels based upon the latest changes in TIP, I mean, not only would that be able to tell us, you know, it, What's, it, it would also let us know what's missing in those stable kernels. Like uh, maybe there's a fixes tag that's missing on that patch because it actually does fix a bug that needs to be backported and it, otherwise it wouldn't make it back to stable. So, so right. if a new test or a new change causes, causes old kernels to fail, then I, it's, it's a really nice feedback loop to know that, yeah, there's a real bug here that needs to be fixed and backported. So that's one of the reasons I have been, that's one of the things I have in mind when I, when I, when I, encourage, when I have been talking about it. Um, so that better coverage, better coming, um, and all of that. And then another thing is um, fixing these. When the, sometimes I, if you find a problem like that, just send me patch. Because that would be something um, we have to prioritize and put that in. So. Um, do, how are we doing on time? Yeah, you have like about uh, seven or eight minutes. Okay, um, okay, great. Um, so I think we kind of, uh, so the, the other things, that was the uh, highest priority that I was trying to get answer for. And the other things is that we are increasing ARM coverage. Last time I asked, last year when I did this, I asked, hey, we're missing ARM tests. So we have added a bunch of them. Um, we, it needs, still needs work, but you can see the num from the numbers that number of tests that run on ARM are, and we need driver coverage, and we're improving that. And um, so identifying dependencies, I kind of covered that. That is a part of the CI thing. We have to identify dependencies. Like for example, x86 test, that is something tests, individual test maintainers can do also thinking about the dependencies and do they want to handle that in, the, in their um, shell scripts or wrappers that they run. Because x86 does that, 32-bit libraries are missing, then at least it spits out and says, hey, load this. At least instructions on how to load. So we have to continue, start continuing to do that. Some of the things we probably can do at the um, framework level, which I can. Uh, we can make that happen, in, in, and but they, some of that falls into the test, uh, individual tests as well. So the third, the last item here probably is another thing I wanted to discuss because K build integration has been, um, has been it, it, because it sits under tools, it has been somewhat problematic. It kind of sits there, and it does. It's not well integrated with K build at the moment. And Michael, okay, yes. I think the question I have for sort of distro packaging people is should it be integrated with K-Build? Right. Or would it be better if we just used Mason or whatever? Right. Some other thing. Right. Uh, you know, because it's K-Build's for building the kernel and this is not kernel code. Um, so I can't, I'm not sure. I, I feel like K-Build might actually be worse for <laughs> packaging people. But I'm not sure, because right. that would sort of mean you have to build it with the kernel, whereas now you can actually, it's standalone. You can, you can build it separately. So yeah, I don't know. Right, that's actually a question I got a thumbs to up say, should it be integrated with K-Build? Because there have been, okay. So that's actually a question, yeah. 
So it looks like there is a opinion on should it be integrated or should it not? So that's as, as long as you don't lose any features. So cross compile is absolutely essential for in the embedded world. So don't lose K build output, don't lose O equal, that type of stuff. As long as you don't lose those features, then sure, why not? We have to, yeah, that, that's where, that's what, that's the pro, that's why I'm asking this question because some of the things, I'm sorry, some of the, okay. So, yeah, so the one thing I'll add here is I think it really depends on who you want to be running the tests. Um, and I think that's actually one of the issues with GCE XFS test versus CI, which is if you are building a test system that is designed for use for developers, you're going to optimize it in a mm -hmm. certain direction. Right. Um, if you're trying to build something so that it can be used as part of continuous integration or by a distro builder, it's gonna get pushed in a different direction. Correct. And the challenge is can we make a system that can be easy for kernel developers and maintainers who are trying to evaluate an incoming patch, right. right, versus people who want to run it under continuous integration or as part of a distro build process, right? And those are really, really different, right? right? So, so we are, yeah. right now, I am heavily tilted towards developers, and that's where, that's the primary goal for this subsystem, of course. And so that's the balance point, so that's why. Is so, that arguing for K-Build integration or against I am not, it? I'm not I am, sure. <laughs> I'm not arguing for um, K-Build integration with this um, last bullet item. I'm not. I am asking because it keeps coming up. So I keep explaining that um, I would like to keep this as a easier maintainers, I, uh, developers, because that's why I don't uh, entertain the idea of uh, integration with Jenkins or integration with all sorts of other things. No external dependencies. So I'm not, um, so uh, what I am asking is, um, it, because I keep hearing, oh, it's not integrated with cable, we can't run, um, or we can't, do this because we can't run, because of the, some of the features that, um, that automatically come because of K-Build. Because I'm, we're duplicating a lot of the stuff. I have done it, Michael has done it. We do the um, building out of tree. Um, when we run K-Self test, uh, people come and say, well, our repo, is, um, um, rep repo gets dirty. We need to run make prepare. And then, you know, the, we have had these discussions before. So, it becomes harder and harder to bring the features, cabled, duplicate cabled features. It's not worthwhile to do that. So is that, is that a, if that is a one of the things that developer wants, developers want, which it seems like the case, um, some developers don't want to run this because their Git repo gets dirty, then we need to address that as a developer requirement. Right. And I, I suspect the main thing is what developers really want is no matter what their workflow, whether they're using a O equals mm -hmm. subdirectory or something else, they want to be able to run like at most, you know, it should take less than, I don't know, 15, 16 characters to type, right? If you have to, you know, run dot slash tools, dot slash scripts, K unit, you know, dash J, whatever, right? The longer it takes to run to type, the harder it is. Well, make so, and that can be a both. That can be a both and, right? I mean, that just means you need to have a, you know, make whatever that runs that long command. It doesn't mean that that has to be the only way you run K self tests. <laughs> Michael. Yeah, I was just going to say one of the things that we still, I think, support mm -hmm. is some of the subdirectories of self-tests, people want to be able to build that self-contained. Mm -hmm. You know, like yes. the x86 people want to just be able to run make in their directory. Right. And so, you know, K-Build would break that, I think. K-Build will break and that. And possibly of course, one yeah. of the right. funky new build systems would also break that. But maybe we're at a stage where we can say that's not a feature anymore. But yeah, I guess what we have now was very minimal to you know put a little bit of structure around and not impose anything on the test writers right and 
you know, finding that balance is tricky. Right. So you can run K self test with doing make a K self test very easily, uh, or make K self test with a few targets if you want to. So there, it's all documented in the K self test document, by the way. So it's a matter of going and looking at it. But I think I think part of it is that people are use, have their own workflows, different developers and maintainers. Um, so, and then they integrate it into their testing, some of this workflow, um, like networking and BPF. They, so that's one of the reasons we have, I have been continuing to support all the existing use cases. Like, for example, you can run, make K self test and give the directory name, directly invoke that build and test. So, um, and it's a long path name. So moving it up, irrespect might solve with or without cable integration might solve that problem that's another question but that means that's that means the stable um, fixes going into stable will be difficult so that's a second thing that if we can make it more visible if we move it up to, um, to uh, right under the root so that's a separate question based not necessarily coupled with cable so how how do people feel about that <laughs> so. Well, um, backporting <laughs> uh, to stables becomes a little bit of a problematic thing, and in, in right, if you path changes, or is it not a problem? Can I just ask a quick question <laughs> while sure, I have sure. the microphone? Um, apologies if this has been mentioned. I couldn't make the start of this mm -hmm. session. Um, one thing that came up when I was reviewing some of the ARM tests recently is um, it's not completely clear whether k -self test should be working against any random version of the UAPI headers. Um, I think by default, you tend to, if you just include like Linux slash blah, you tend to use whatever headers the tool chain was built with or the host headers. Um, should we always be using the kernel, um, the UAPI headers for the kernel tree that we're building in and make sure those are installed somewhere? So um, some, yeah, go ahead. Is the second part to that question or is? No, that was all of it, really. Okay. There may just be some wiring up that we missed, but... Um, it's... Um, it is, it had, you can specify... You ha the K self test should run with the headers that is matched, rev matched with the kernel. So, so we don't expect it to work with other versions of headers then? Correct. Okay. Because it, it, it'll yeah. have header dependencies, and yeah. um, there are some tests that go install their headers. So that's a part of the install process, so. Okay, I'll take another look at that. So I think we're into lunch. I think there was one last question, okay. and. Uh, yeah, so I was just pointing out, you brought up the question of, of you know, if it's gonna be harder to backport patches to stable if, if we move the, the, the directory. Um, but I think we aren't settled on whether or not we're going to backport the the changes. <laughs> so well, so we does do, that even matter? So we do backport fixes, right? We yeah. do auto oh, selection yeah. and we do um, several um, auto selection. So, um, so Greg, do you have a preference? Yeah. Or, so, so, uh, so say, moving, if you tell me what directory you're moving things to, if you tell me you're moving directories, I can, my, my, it doesn't bother me. Okay. We've had many subsystems do this. Networking's done this, media's okay. done this. This would be trivial. Okay. Oh, no, 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 I'm not answering that question. <laughs> I'm answering the question about stable so backporting patches. Don't worry, moving directories, okay, do not great. consider me in that. Do okay. what's best for you. Okay, that's, that sounds that's great. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'll probably go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and move it in that case. Um, uh, cable integration is a separate issue. So, okay. All right, and so then, I, okay, yeah. I think we're about out of time, so let's thank Shua, and we can continue this later. Yep.